you know, flea markets, how did they get their term, you know, back in the ancient ancient days, you know, you, you bought stuff full of fleas, right? And that's how we got the flea market term. A flea market is like fleas, they're all over. A flea market is a great place for people to save money. It's a great place for people to make money. We're kind of like a big crew here, family, and I uh, like to help each other. Oh, I think it's more family like, you know, when you're at a flea market. No two days are the same. We sell different things every day. A lot, a lot of good friends helped me uh, build this store. You're going to see a lot of people that are repeat customers. And I can find things in the flea market I can't find in the stores. The future's wide open for this type of business. I've always bought and sold stuff. And I grew up with my dad and uncles and all doing it. My mom used to tell a story that I had 11 brothers. And my dad sold four of them. So. I was still living in Hawaii at the time when I first heard. And my dad said, uh, yeah, so we bought a flea market. I didn't even know what it meant. We was out driving one day and happened to go by, and my husband said, well, he wanted to see if the guy still had it for sale. So we stopped and talked to him. One thing led to the other, and next thing you know, we had the keys. We've had yard sales and stuff like that, and we bought a lot of stuff. And I bought closed out stores and stuff, like Hobby Lobby clothes, and we bought their inventory, made it bigger when we bought it, and added more stuff, and just kept expanding. We got a buddy that makes soy candles, and we got 88 different scents of soy candles. I've got a friend in Ohio, Dayton, Ohio. He makes hot horseradish and mustards. And, and he sells our jams and jellies over there, and I sell his products over here. There's a guy that makes uh, stag knives. He takes deer antlers and hand makes knives. I've got a guy in North Vernon that makes our t-shirts for us we sell. My brother makes the swings and the picnic tables that we have outside. People all made different things, you know, needed an outlet for them, so we just put it all together, and next thing you know, we got a pretty good size flea market going. We have a startup man by the name of Roy Roberts, and he started with a horse, mules, doing the sorghum grinding. The sorghum cane, you squeeze the juice out of it, and uh, when you harvest the cane, let it dry for a couple days, basically the same process as maple syrup. This is a horsepower sorghum mill like they used back in the 1800s, early 1900s. You feed your sorghum into it here and it squeezes the juice out. You can make sorghum cookies, barbecue sauces, put it in baked beans, tons of things you can use sorghum for. I've always sold things on my life all through, so this uh, flea market part was easy. Having a place to put the stuff in wasn't much, wasn't much of a difference. It was the whole jams and jellies and preserves and relishes and things like that that were new to me. We make probably a hundred different jams and jellies. We have Amish family helps us make the jams and jellies. And we make a lot of relishes, and just chow chows, pepper relishes, green tomato relishes. One of the big famous things is pumpkin rolls and persimmon puddings. I'll make both of those. I also make uh, banana bread, uh, pumpkin bread, pumpkin pecan, zucchini. Is that anything the person wants, I can make it here. Get out on the weekends when I'm home and do my chores and stuff, and you can smell the breads and stuff cooking. That's always in the kitchen. That's where she's always at cooking. The bacon, I've done a lot of that with my own family, but then a lot of the recipes I had to learn. And uh, I think the hardest part was uh, how much in one day you have to make a lot more breads. You don't start out with two or three loaves, it could be a hundred loaves, so big step on that. Just like being at home, you can smell mom cooking in the kitchen all the time. It's where Pat's at, and it's the smell of the bread in the air, just so good. The apple butter is very popular. About 150 year old recipes, good thick apple butter, the real good rich flavor. We bake up the apple butter and we put it in a jar. We sell it here and we sell it there. We have to get it all mixed up in a pan with the cinnamon and the apples and the sugar and all that stuff. And 
We stick it in the oven, it has to bake for over six hours. And then we take it out of the oven, and we put it in the jars, and put labels on it. You can take the lid off of a new jar or half jar or whatever and turn it upside down, walk away with 20 minutes, come back, and it's, it's still in the jar. It's good thick apple butter. My mom made it as a kid when I was small, but Pat's apple butter is very good. All I know is that it tastes so yummy when it gets down in your tummy. Mm-mm, good. Apple butter. I think it's grew a lot since we've been here because we've had so many people come here and says, well, you know, the previous owners wasn't open that much. And the fact that we're open year-round has really contributed to the business. I think one reason is because it's been around for so many years and people's used to the apple butter or they're used to the bacon. There's a lot of local people comes in around here and buys breads and pumpkin rolls and stuff, so having the place open all the time, I think it's really helped a lot. And it's not very expensive as far as like going out to the stores. My dad tries to keep the price pretty reasonable. It makes it easier for, you know, especially with our economy the way it is. We got a lot of new stuff here too, like pillow pets and stuff like that. You buy it like at Walmart, they're 1995. Here we sell them $15. We try to stay 25 to 30% lower in most stores on the new stuff. I like going to flea markets because you can spend many hours looking at all different things. And here at Bill and Pat's, you can look at all the different foods and jellies and hot sauces, just a variety of things. You're going somewhere, you don't know exactly what's going to be there, and maybe you find something that you like, and maybe you won't, but the next time you may, because things keep changing. You're in here 30 minutes, you're going to buy something because there's you're going to find something that you want. It's not just what they have at a flea market that is fun. You know, it's it's the interaction with people. You know, cuz a lot of times somebody will come in and they'll just they just want to walk around. They just want to have a place to hang out. And they don't necessarily have to buy anything. It's just they like they like the atmosphere. I don't know. I like it's more family like, you know, when you're at a flea market than it is somewhere else. I've had uh, people write me letters from everywhere. Uh, I've had people email me and tell me how good the stuff was and how experience they had coming in the store. If you haven't been to Bill and Pat's, you really need to stop in and see what they got. Everything is sellable. Anything you think of that you want to sell, you can. These are lug nuts off of my car that I had kind of, the chrome came off, so that's for his feet. I just started mixing stuff together and we got soap. I've also seen a really scary looking clown. It's about yay high. It scares kids, it scared my dad. Uh, I was in business with my father, uh, Jerry Hicks, and my mother, Patricia Hicks, uh, and then we were in the garage business, is what this business was in the past. From that, we ventured into um, opening up a laundromat and a car wash, and along with the laundromat, we also ran a tanning salon, and we ran that until uh, 2007 and rented the building. So I was left with this large building, and I got wind uh, from a local auctioneer here in Martinsville that. Uh, there were uh, a lot of uh, uh, spaces or uh, vacancies in uh, a flea market uh, with people wanting to come into a flea market. So that's, that's the, uh, the choice I, I made was with go with the flea market. I had to kind of build the, the, build the rooms and the, and the flow of the building uh, with what the building was giving me at the time. The ceiling was in really rough shape. I, re I removed all that. I did uh, electrical improvements, lowered the ceiling down uh, to an eight foot insulated uh, ceiling. And then this whole north wall, about 30 foot of it, was removed. There it is looking out to the sky, looking back to the north, that whole wall right there. There were walls that were structurally uh, load bearing walls that I couldn't move. And I had to uh, kind of coordinate 
the different size booths with, with what I had uh, to deal with. It was uh, uh, a lot of thinking and scratching. <laughs> While we were remodeling the building, and we had people come in and tour the building and set, show them where the booths would be, how big they were, and what our concept was on how we would rent them and how um, the process would be um, for them to bring in their items and then sell them and, and get reimbursed at the end of the month. Well, I had no experience. Um, basically, I wanted to downsize a bed. It was a metal frame, and I wanted to be, it was a queen, I wanted it to be a full-size bed, and so, Dad says, well, we can just cut it, weld it back together, and I thought that was pretty cool. So we have a little TIG welder, and he has a bunch of spare parts around, and I just thought, oh, let's see what we can make out of this. I started with the bath tees, and then went into the soap, actually. I mainly started thinking about it when um, the girls at work, the, the aides, I work as a nurse, and their hands were getting chapped and cracked. And so I thought maybe I could make something that would be better. I'm not quite sure how I got here. I think uh, how it all began, I've been, I've been to this and that flea market a number of times. And uh, I happened to be at an auction uh, late last summer. And uh, they were selling some craftsman uh, tools, uh, things that had been returned to craft, you know, from Sears. And I thought, this, I might be able to make some money on this stuff. So the salesman kind of come out of me. These are railroad uh, pieces. I don't know what they're exactly called. And to make the frog face, I just laid them on the table. I'm like, that kind of looks like a frog. There is um, peppermint leaves and powdered milk and Lord. Oh, oatmeal and bath salts. And that way, and all you have to do is you just take one and as when the tub is full, you just put one in. I used one of the orange bliss and the whole bathroom smelled like oranges. I have a slot machine in here and that's got a lot of attention. Um, it has tokens with it so when there's kids around and people are looking at it, I tend to plug it in and fire it up and let the kids play with it a little bit. I had purchased some uh, Puma bicycles. Um, they're kind of crazy, they're a little bit retro. They're a European made bicycle. They're uh, really built more for the, like the, uh, the businessman that he can ride, you know, ride through the city to work and then actually carry the bicycle to, you know, into his office when he's, uh, when he's at work. I found um, essential oils that were, I know Twilight, the movie Twilight is real big right now, and they were Twilight inspired fragrances. And it, it's just, they smell so good. And it's like, so I got, I have Bella and Renesme, which is baby in the last movie. My wife gets on me a little bit for spending so much time here, but. Um, it's kind of the release for me, you know, being a sales guy and working, you know, so hard and so intensely throughout the week. This is uh, kind of my relaxation, kind of my little hobby is what it's turned into the last uh, few months. People's reactions sometimes is like, what in the world is that made of? Or, you know, how did you do that? Um, it just makes me want to do more because it's recycling and it's fun. <laughs> we have a lot of variety of customers. They come in for specific items that some people collect certain types of pottery or glassware um, I have other people that come in looking for trains um, and then other people are just everyday shoppers looking for a good deal on clothing or kitchen items or furniture. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the public probably feels that maybe there's, you know, it's, you're just going to see a bunch of junk there. You know, hunt, you know, flea markets, how did they get their term? You know, back in the ancient ancient days, you know, you, you bought stuff full of fleas, right? And that's how we get the flea market terms. So. I think it's new quality good stuff, so I'm all about saving that buck. I closed down one evening and uh, basically got the, the shop to myself to do my own Christmas shopping. It's almost like Christmas because you can go and then see something that you want and you get it and then you go again and it's totally different. This and that, it's there's all kinds of different things in here and I usually carry a magnet with me so when I look at other booths I always, oh I kind of like that piece and if the magnet sticks then I can weld it. So the flea market was kind of a good change for things. I get brought in a lot more happier people. Um, my parents were a lot less stressed out and uh, got to interact with the community more. 
A flea market is a great place for people to save money. It's a great place for people to make money. If you have things that you need to sell, um, it's a great place to do that at. The impact on the town, I think it's helped encourage um, customers and the community to shop locally. I'm giving a hundred, a hundred other people a, a, a small opportunity to make an income that, that they didn't have the opportunity before. It's a, an alternative choice to the block stores, the big giant retail stores. Uh, the variety that's in the flea market, nothing is uh, uniform from one booth to booth or from room to room or from flea market to flea market. It's the uniqueness of the, uh, of the building, of the people, of the vendors, of the customers. It's a total package. Most places have themes. McDonald's has themes and ever, all the different stores have themes. So I thought well, all our flea markets should have a theme. So we came up with the pirate theme and, and it works uh, well as uh, recycled treasures because there's a lot of treasures here and they're usually recycled. You gotta have stuff for the kids. You gotta have stuff for the little guys, you know, the babies. And you gotta have stuff for the women. Well, I like going to flea markets because they have a lot of old vintage records and collectibles, and that's a good place to find them. We try to keep everything kind of a, on a nautical theme, and then uh, we have uh, all the captain's quarters here, and uh, the head for the restroom, and the helm for the for the cash register area. Pirates always had big birds, parrots, so I thought we need a parrot here. And kids like him, and then a lot of people, uh, adults like him. Most of my family work here. Uh, it, it helps us as a family to, to make ends meet. One, one daughter's good at managing things, and. Uh, and I have another girl, our daughter, that's, uh, she's the bookkeeper. I have a background in management, and uh, so the, the, the leasing and the customer relations, and there's 90-some vendors in here at any given time that have booth space in here. So we have to manage all of that, keep their accounts in order, and uh, attend to their needs. We had a good turnout. We opened with a few vendors. We probably didn't have maybe 20 or 30 vendors at that time. And, and uh, it's been steadily uh, growing and we're just about full. All our vendors, they price their own items and they uh, rent the booth and uh, make our money that way. Why do I like it? It's like a second income, you see? And it's just a lot of fun. Well, you, you come in and, you know, we come in once or twice a week. Uh, we stock our booths and then, you know, we don't have to do anything else. I go on the internet a lot and just kind of see what things are, what people are pricing things at, but then I also look at what are they selling for. You know, because just because they price it, say, at $50, it may only sell for 20 I mean, if you don't want something in your house, you take it to your market and sell it. My boys are in uh, wrestling and football. This is the football fund, yes. <laughs> um, there's a whole bunch of different stuff in here that, that you can buy that you can't buy other places. Well, definitely wanted to, to have the most booths out here for floor space, but we didn't want to make it so crowded and, and confined where people felt claustrophobic. And uh, we, again, we wanted aisles that people could go up and down and carts could go and wheelchairs could go and, and uh, a, lot, a lot more space for people didn't 
didn't look all cluttered and, and confined. We all like to buy stuff from our store. We all, even the vendors want to buy, or the crew like to buy from the stores. It's hard not to shop here. There's absolutely everything in here. I got this for three bucks. Somebody paid a lot of money for that. <laughs> I see something I like, I buy. When we're close to one and we're, we have time, yeah, we stop in and look around and see what we can find. If we need something, we think, boy, we should have a vendor for that. We have a Facebook site, Recycled Treasures Flea Market, and uh, we have a lot of different people that are like us on that, and we that's how we communicate. We t we'll tell about our treasure hunts that we got going on, our uh, drawings that we have, tell about our new vendors and maybe what they're selling or what they have to, to offer, so uh, that, that helps a lot. Yeah, we have a always have a treasure hunt going on here since we have the pirate theme. We'll put clues out on our Facebook site and uh, people get on there and look at the clues and, and add it all together and eventually they'll find that treasure, hopefully. I guess definitely the benefits of working somewhere like this are the people, both the customers and the vendors. You get to know a lot of the local community and, and make a lot of new friends that, that I might have not known before. The flea markets benefit me because I go looking for different things, you know, items that you can find and unusual stuff, you know, that you can't find ever elsewhere. A flea market is like fleas, they're all over and, and people are investing in them now because it is a good source for income. I'm just glad that, that people are realizing that when you say flea market, they think it's just, a, you know, junky stuff and and uh, not worth much. And you can find some really relics that you didn't uh, know about at a flea market. Well, this flea market, which was something new to me, has a new idea to me that I hadn't thought of. Has really been a benefit to the community. Both, we have a lot of vendors that are able to supplement their incomes and sell at a place like this, as well as the, the small community here has a place to buy necessary practical items at a discount that they may have not otherwise been able to do. Well, I naturally like to start a couple more flea markets in, in other towns because it's, it's, uh, it's fulfilling. I like to, I like the flea markets and I like our, our store and, and as I just said before, it, it, it's good, it helps people in a lot of different ways. We have our gems and jellies of Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, uh, probably 300 or more different stores. We've got it in the health food stores in Indianapolis, Kokomo, Lafayette. It does real well in the stores. People get, they come in, they buy it, they try it, they like it, they come back. Well, I naturally like to start a couple more flea markets in, in other towns. It'll all be pirated themed recycled treasures.